and Barand and fourth, Mrs. Charlotte Osei, the first female appointed chairperson of the Electoral Commission who conducted and supervised a violent free election that led to an incumbent government ceding power to the opposition. It was under the late president, His Excellency Professor John Evans Atta Mills, that Ghana had its first woman speaker of parliament, the Right Honorable Mrs. Joyce Banford Adam, from 2009 to 2013, under the 1992 constitution. And indeed, in our country's history, this was and remains the highest position ever attained by a woman. But for the determined and orchestrated program of Reagan, the last presidential elections, where the shameless MPP, assisted by the much compromised Electoral Commission, the candidate of the NDC, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, would have gone a step further and achieved for Ghana the honor of having her first woman vice president in the person of Professor Nana Jane. As a woman, I should have celebrated the appointment of another woman in the high office of the EC, but the new EC chairperson, through her actions and inactions, can be seen that she works under the direction and influence of her appointing authority. The president, Nana Adudankwa Akufu Ado, does not believe in the intellectual capacity and capability of a Ghanaian woman. And we can all refer to his embarrassing and insulting statement that he made at Vancouver Women Deliver Conference, the largest gathering of women in the world. His statements were beyond embarrassing, but an insult to every Ghanaian woman. Of course, including our own mother, Mrs. Rebecca Akufu Adam. In the last general elections, which recorded an unprecedented level of fatalities and wanton violence, it is the women and children of the dead and the injured, the wives and mothers of the wounded and men. It is they who borne the extreme burden of care and sorrow. And in most cases, my brothers and sisters, the loss of the family's breadwinner in the most violent elections we have had as a country since the advent of the Fourth Republic. Ghana can do better and we must do better. When during the general elections, an able and capable strong woman, women's organizer, Comrade Ama Benuado, was attacked and wounded by hoodlums apparently belonging to the new patriotic party. An attack that affected her two legs, today in her old age, has become her cross. My brothers and sisters, I'm happy that at least our mother lives with a sound mind and memory to tell her nightmare. Little could we have foreseen that this will be a pattern of engagement to be adopted by the NPP during our national elections. On this note, I wish to pay a special homage to our mother, Honorable Ama Benuado, a great woman in whose footprints I look for every day, all the time, and I step in in my duty as a national women's organizer of the NDC. Mommy, the NDC, your women, we are grateful to you. The state-sponsored world orchestrated 2020 electoral violence in their quest of subverting the will of the people by all means had a newly married Ibrahim Abbas from Ablekuma Central lost his life painfully. Abdullah Ayari and Tarudin Mohammed both from Techiman South lost their lives. A 14 years old young girl was shot dead in Sabzogu and several others were injured. To their memory, and to the memory of all the departed souls, we say, may they continue to rest in paradise. Regardless, 
I stand as a national women's organizer of the NDC to sympathize and share the pain with all our women who lost their husbands, children, and siblings in the just ended elections. My assurance to them on this special day is that we are strong, capable, and together in this hard and trying times. I call on the Speaker of Parliament to use his high office to ensure that justice is done for the loss of our women and men who died during the just ended national elections. This is the only way we will wipe the tears of our mothers and wives and children who lost their breadwinners, and we shall not rest until justice prevails. Over the past decade, women have borne the brunt of the harsh inequalities and economic challenges that characterize daily life in Ghana. As a country, we have done very well in changing the circumstances of many of our women folk for the better. But my brothers and sisters, we need to do far, far more. Taking motivation from this year's theme and making reference to the very challenging global COVID-19 pandemic, the NDC, by way of commitment, set up a committee of health experts made up of women and men to help the government in its fight against COVID-19 because we anticipated the impact on women by the government on play it. Again, this government has since not been able to champion a single policy that seeks to protect women and children amidst this pandemic Although government has announced huge budget as COVID-19 relief package for the population. This year, this year globally, other countries have equally placed women on the radar of global politics. The first female vice president of the United States of America, Her Excellency Harris Kamara, the CEO of the World Trade Center came from this African continent, Nigeria to be precise, Mrs. Ngozi Okonjo Iwami. We congratulate these women and further encourage our young, gallant women in Ghana to rise up and put themselves forward in leadership positions. We equally celebrate the business women in Ghana, our women in our markets who toil to ensure our markets are not closed. We also appreciate women farmers who bring food to the markets. We appreciate the headquarters, popularly known as Kayaye, the women involved in this type of business. The women health practitioners who are in the front line saving souls. Our housewives who run the homes to ensure the growth of our children. I salute the NDC women right from national to the region, constituency, and branches who have taken the risk to stand up for this party in the regions and constituencies and branches. Their efforts are appreciated, though we believe the verdict, the verdict of the elections is faulty. Female journalists should be applauded for upholding freedom of speech as a right and do their best despite having to tolerate this oppressive government that has zero respect and tolerance for freedom and justice. I also see this opportunity to salute our gallant women in the security services. While we celebrate this day, it is sad to say that pregnant women continue to die in hospitals due to negligence on the part of government to fulfill its promise on health. Surprisingly, the president is yet to commission the 88 hospitals he promised on a certificate or under certificate of emergency. Not even a single one. The MPP is yet to realize the importance of women and children in this country. I wish to call on the NPP. Nana Adodampa Akufuaga, His Excellency, led the administration to speak up and churn out an educational campaign to 
educate women on the ongoing vaccination. We also expect government to come out with a take, if not the assessment of our local virologists, biologists, and researchers on the same vaccines. The NDC will stand today and be stronger because we have a story to tell. We have projects to work on, development that can be seen, of women in NDC at all levels should rise up against the oppression of this government. The record of the National Democratic Congress in the empowerment of women can never be underestimated. The emphasis on the education of a girl child, the, the, the deliberate policy of giving women the opportunity to also contribute to the progress and welfare of Ghana has never been in doubt. Today, as we celebrate and honor our women, may we never be found wanting in continually lifting our women from the shackles of poverty, violence, and illiteracy. May we always remember to empower our women in all spheres of endeavor so that they may be treated with respect and dignity, both at home and in the offices and also in the public space. The women of Ghana deserve better. And upon us, my brothers and sisters, rest the responsibility to ensure that they achieve their goals to become upright, respected, respectable, and useful citizens for this dear nation of ours. For Dr. Adri once said, when you educate a woman, you educate a nation. When you educate a man, you educate an individual. Finally, let me use this opportunity today as women gathered here to console our flag bearer, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, on the outcome of the election petition. But for you, sir, women in leadership won't reach this height. In conclusion, by the hashtag of this year's International Women's Day celebration, hashtag choose to challenge. One, we challenge the Speaker of Parliament to use his high office to get the government through its ministers to bring to book the perpetrators of the 2020 election violence. We challenge the government to support women and empower them to succeed in their endeavor and to offer protection to women as a right. We challenge government to fulfill its promise of the 88 hostels. We challenge government to give full account of the misenterprising girls. Yes, we know that some guys have been put behind bars. We want to know the outcome of some sort of bodies that they claim to have found. What was the result of the DNA? What has become of our girls? We also challenge government on behalf of the wives and mothers of Ahmed Swale, and the victims of Ayawa Subway's Swagumba election violence to comply with the MA Short Commission's recommendations. Long live the NDC, long live Ghana, God bless our homeland Ghana and make it great and strong. May God make us fearless as a people. May God help us to resist your presence through. Before I say that, I want to make a special acknowledgement to the Right Honourable Speaker, uh, former Speaker of Parliament, Joyce Adley Bamford Addo, our first female Speaker of Parliament, as I said, Mrs. Betty Modrisu, our first female Attorney General, Mrs. Marita Brigopon, former Attorney General, played a very key role in the just ele election petition. Her Excellency Nana, Dr. Mrs. Lordina Dramani Mahama, our own mother, the former First Lady of the Republic of Ghana. Mommy, we are grateful, especially I'm very grateful for all the pieces of good advice you've been giving to me. I thank you so much. I'm blessed and we are blessed to have you as our mother. We love you, Mommy, and happy related birthday to you once again. Mrs. Nadu Mills, Mrs. Matilda Emisa Atta, Madam Cecilia Johnson, 
And of course, I'll mention again the Vice President of the United States and the Chief Executive Officer of the World Trade. I also want to salute my predecessors, my own mom, Honorable Ama Benuado, my own sister, Anita de Soso, and her deputies, my own sister, Hajia Joyce Mahama, my sister, Dr. Catherine Denu, Hajia Sophia Enana Oyelita, the former gender minister and human rights activist. To these women and many more that I was not able to mention, we say, Ayiko, we are grateful to you. May God bless our homeland, Ghana. May he make us strong. May he make our country great. And may he help us as people to be bold. And that's our